Welcome to Jack Rabbit Journal, the rundown on the rabbits in men's and women's basketball. Let's start with the Jack Rabbit women. They are a little hard to figure out right now, as most women are, but uh, three and three in the Summit League, right in the middle of the pack right now. The Jacks just lost to their biggest rival, USD, but it was on the road, and SDSU played without their best player that night. And they did score 101 and beat Omaha by 35 earlier in the week. You know, our offensive performance against Omaha had a lot to do with a, a bunch of players playing well. It wasn't just any one person. Mariah had a great game. We had some other players that, that did well. We had six and double figures. We had 25 offensive rebounds in that game, so a lot of second chance points. We had some transition baskets, got the ball inside. It was just a result of a lot of effort that went into kind of hustle plays on both ends. So really proud of how we played. 101 points is great. I don't know why that 100 point mark is such a landmark for everybody, but uh, it certainly makes the game entertaining and a little more fun to watch. Yeah, last basket's fun, but to be honest with you, I'm more worried about how we played and effort was really good, intensity was really good. I thought the team moved the ball well too. People forget we had 28 assists on just around 30 plus baskets. So almost every basket had a, a person creating and making the right pass at the right time. So it was a fun style to watch, that's for sure. The Jacks put up a season high 83 field goal attempts against Omaha. That's 14 more than any other game so far this season. They had 32 extra shots just in this game. Those extra shots came because of our defense. We forced, I believe, 25 turnovers in that game right in that area. It really made them, I think, a little bit uncomfortable with their offense. We were plus 15, I think, in that margin. And then on the other end, uh, we just got a ton of offense rebounds. I think we had 25 offense rebounds. Uh, and then Mariah had five, China had five, Macy had five. So three players right there created a lot of second chance points for us. The Jacks had six players score at least 10 points. All five starters were in double digits, plus Clarissa Ober coming off the bench. We don't run a lot of sets for anybody. We have some, some isolations at times when we need them, but our offense is, you know, five people have to be able to do five different things. And uh, it's always going to be kind of an equal opportunity. So when you see that many people getting shots, getting touches, it has a lot to do with how we're moving the ball, how we're uh, playing aggressively within the offensive style. And I just think it makes us a little more difficult to guard. And it was not the offense that let them down on Saturday in the game at USD. Senior Rachel Walters replaced Megan Watashik in the lineup. Watashik was ill and did not make the trip. I think it hurts not having Megan's length and quickness and athleticism, especially on the defensive end, rebounding wise. In terms of what we get from a, a player offensively, uh, there's not a huge, huge difference. Yes, Megan's a great offensive player. I'm not taking anything away from her, but we still scored 77 points in that game. That wasn't our, our issue of, of losing there. Um, you know, our issue was on the defensive end. I think that's probably where we miss Megan's length and her toughness and her energy the most. But Rachel filled in and did great. I thought Chloe Corneman played one of her best games. Um, you know, her numbers weren't just off the charts, but played hard, gave us a lot of good defensive presence out there. We did a lot of good things in that game, but not a good enough good defensive things in that game. We just can't continue to give up that many points and expect to win. Still, Macy Miller scores a career-high 25, and her layup gives the Jacks a one-point lead with 3.51 to play. Yeah, we were ahead one late with about three minutes to go. Gave up an offensive rebound, they hit a three in the corner. Uh, we came back and, and uh, had a turnover. They came back and we got a stop, gave up an offensive rebound, boom, another three. So our, uh, our one-point lead goes away in a hurry. Uh, but even with that, we came back and made some shots of our own. And uh, it's just not enough. We need more stops from our team. They got to the free throw line a ton. That's a reflection of our defense and something we need to improve on. Um, offensively, again, did everything we probably needed to to win. We could always be a little better, but gee, 70 plus points should be enough to win. And that's, that's a defensive issue and something we'll have to get better. Up next, the Jackrabbit men are rolling right now. Defense is leading to offense. Offense is leading to more points than the other team. Except for that first eight minutes against the Coyotes. We'll talk about it all next with head coach Scott Nagy. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back to Jackrabbit Journal. The Jackrabbit men have won four in a row now, or five in a row, depending on how it went on Wednesday night against Fort Wayne. We're going to say five in a row. Anyway, the Jacks used an epic comeback to beat USD this past Saturday, and they started the week with a win over IUPUI in which the Jacks had the Jags down 15 to nothing in that game. We were sharp defensively. Our energy was good. Uh, offensively, we weren't great. I mean, we really should have been up uh, probably 20 by that point. We were... Uh, you know, I, I feel like we're still struggling a little bit offensively. We, it's just not uh, working very smoothly for us. But 
when we're good defensively, we, we're still better offensively. But when we're bad defensively, then we're, we're awful offensively. And uh, in that game, obviously our energy was good. And, and uh, you know, I just wish that we could get off the better starts offensively. Well, the Jacks shoot just 32% in the first half. And even with the 15 to nothing head start, lead by only 10 at halftime. Even at halftime, I didn't like the way the game was going, the pace of the game. I think they had it in their favor, even though we were ahead. And, uh, you know, I felt it in the second half. It's just like we couldn't get going. We couldn't get any fast breaks. And, and a lot of that had to do with them. I think that they're, they have big guards. They're long, uh, very difficult to shoot over the top of. They're hard to pass around. And, uh, you know, they play at a slow pace. And so I felt that they had the pace of the game at their, at their liking. The Jacks pick it up, though, shooting 56% in the second half. They hold IUPUI to 38% overall. And freshman Reed telling Hughes puts in 12 points after halftime. He ends up leading SDSU in scoring with 18. Well, he's shooting it very well. Uh, and he plays with a lot of energy. Like, like he's our best offensive rebounder. He's, he's the one that goes the most consistently. Yeah, you know, but I think he'd be the first to tell you he didn't play great in that game. He had five turnovers and uh, just, you know, things didn't go uh, perfectly for him even though he shot the ball well. A lot of times I think shooting the ball well masks other mistakes and I think in that game it did for him. And the Jacks work it out and win by 15 even after giving back most of that early 15 point lead as IUPUI came back with a pile of points late in the first half. Most of those are, were in what we call the 10 foot zone which is you know 10 feet of the basket which we're trying to protect and uh, so uh, you know I think that, that we started feeling very confident a lot of times when you get off to a start like that, you think it's going to be easy, and you know then the, the other team settles down and they start to play, and uh, I think that we relax, we let them back in the game. Which brings us to Saturday at Frost Arena in the showdown against South Dakota. As the Jacks get all jacked up for the rivalry game and then flop over and play dead in the opening minutes. You would normally think that there would be a ton of energy, but, but a lot of times with adrenaline and the way it works is once you run up down the court one or two times, then you just go flat. And we were flat, and uh, uh, it was obviously not the kind of start that you wanted, down 20 to nothing. I've never been involved in a game like that. Uh, and I think what's even more unusual is that we were ahead at halftime. That's right. South Dakota scores the first 20 points of the game. The Jacks miss their first 12 shots. They go scoreless until this Cody Larson jump hook goes down with more than seven and a half minutes into the ball game. I think most people look at it like, you know, what's wrong with the offense, what's wrong with the offense? And I'm just the opposite. I'm like, the problem with the offense is our defense. Uh, they, they made the first six out of eight shots, and so the, it was a defensive problem. Uh, and again, we know we're pretty good offensively when we're good defensively, and uh, I, I thought that we were too spread out defensively, and uh, we didn't get back in transition. We didn't, we didn't find good shooters in transition, gave them easy shots. And as a result, we're constantly taking the ball out of bounds and playing very slow offensively, which is not a good pace for us. But in a reversal that would make wrestling coach Chris Bono proud, the Jacks reel off an 18-point run of their own. They go on a 28-2 streak, and the Jacks lead by two at halftime. Our defense got better. We tightened up. Uh, you know, at, at the end of the at the first timeout, uh, the four-minute timeout, we just talked to them about getting over the disappointment of the start because normally in a game like that, you want a good start, you want to keep the crowd in it, and it was certainly just the opposite of that. And so. You know, everybody comes to the huddle and is very disappointed. You just have to get over that and move forward, forget about what just happened. Uh, and we, even when we came out of that timeout, we weren't great. Uh, but our defense eventually stiffened, and it led to good offense for us. And, you know, it was an amazing thing to be down 20 to nothing and be ahead at halftime. South Dakota regains the lead midway through the second half, but the Jacks get a three by George Marshall. They get a follow-up dunk by Reed Tellinghusen and a layup by Jake Biddle. They push the lead to 17, and SDSU wins it by 14. And while it seems that things are settling into place, Coach says you never know. We know this, and it's, it's not a very easy thing, but we have very good basketball players that aren't playing any minutes for us. And, uh, you know, how they handle that, how they deal with that, how they come to practice, all that stuff is very important because uh, the, the focus has to be on the team. If the team is doing well, we can't worry about individually how guys are struggling. And we have a lot of guys that are struggling, really, we do, even though we're playing okay. Uh, but but the, the main thing is that our team is moving forward. There's still a lot of things to work on, and that's always going to be the focus, the team over everybody else.
Well, speaking of that philosophy, coach says that Reed Tellinghusen is going to stay in the starting lineup for right now. Zach Horseman will come off the bench. Nagy says he likes Horseman's defense and his energy right now as the sixth man for the Jacks. And we'll see how it goes again. They play at Oral Roberts this weekend. We'll talk about that game coming up later. We talked with two of the new guys last week here on the show, Reed Tellinghusen and George Marshall. And up next, the story on another new Jackrabbit, a Juco transfer who has added some speed and some style and some score this season. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back. Well, newcomers have definitely made a difference this year for the Jackrabbit men's basketball team with Wisconsin transfer George Marshall and freshman sharpshooter Reed Telling, who's uh, Husen doing their thing. But another junior college transfer is also providing plenty to this revamped and revitalized team. Here is David Brown with more on DeAndre Parks. DeAndre Parks wears number zero on the court, but his presence is far from nothing. The junior college transfer has acclimated well to his new home in Brookings. It took a little just to adjust, you know, coming in with guys that already played at the high level. Me coming in from junior college, you know, they got a lot more experience than me as far as on this level. But I mean, I got a voice and I let it be heard in practice. So I basically try to talk just to be a leader. The leadership mentality comes from his time at Iowa Lakes Community College where he spent the past two seasons leading the Lakers in scoring and earning All-American honors. And while he's adjusted well, he admits his game has changed dramatically since coming to South Dakota State. I take better shots here. You know, in Juco, I was forced to take shots that I had that I shouldn't take just because of the type of player I was and the leader I was over there. But here, guys can do the same thing I can. Anybody can go and get 20. Parks is a key component of a new starting core for the Jackrabbits one that features four guards as well as big man Cody Larson. It's a fun lineup, you know, you got a fast point guard in George, you got a great shooter in Reed, and one of the, probably the best big man in Summer League in Cody Larson. And you got one of the best on-ball defenders in Jake Biddle who can also make plays, so it's, it's pretty fun to be in a lineup with those guys. As usual, defense is the name of the game when it comes to SDSU's philosophy. Parks knows he can score, but prides himself on taking after Coach Scott Nagy and working hard on D. The defense has been great, but I think we can play even better defense and just, you know, beat teams by 40. If we rebound and play even better defense, pack the lane in and contest uh, jump shots. What I was most pleased about him in, in the USD game was just his effort defensively and chasing around Casey Casperbauer, who we feel like is probably the best shooter in the league. And I, I think that DeAndre did a good job of eliminating his shots. And that, to me, that's the most important thing. Like, we get good offense out of him, that's a plus. What we need out of him is good defense, and he gave us that. Regardless of what he provides, Parks knows the stage and the spotlight are bigger and brighter in Brookings. But he's already embracing everything around him. It's crazy. I mean, the uh, rabbit den is... It's been amazing to me, and I'm just glad I'm it could be a part of it. And like the USD game, it was unbelievable how loud it was and how many people were here. I love it. Any DeAndre Parks fun fact: He wore number 11 at his junior college, but that number was already taken by George Marshall when Parks got here. So assistant coach uh, Clint Sargent picked out the zero for Parks because he thought Parks would just look good in it, and he does. Up next. China Stevens, coming up in the Rabbit Fire interview. She really is named after the singer in an 80s pop music group. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. China Stevens is a sophomore from Clark, South Dakota, who has stepped into the starting lineup this year for the Jackrabbit women. She is proud of her tattoos, and she is in our Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. I'm sure you get this a lot, but do you know why you were named China? Oh, well, I mean, I think from what my mom's told me is there's a, uh, if you've ever heard about the, the group Wilson Phillips, China Phillips was the lead singer, my mom was a big fan of them. So she liked China and how she spelled it, she spells it the same way. And also my mom's name is Nicole and she had seven Nickies in her class, so she wanted something a little different that wasn't as ordinary and 
um, a lot of people had. So that's where China came from. See, this is why we do this. The fact that you were named after part of an 80s band is awesome. Second question, same one of the same ones I've asked other teammates. Why are you number zero? Uh, same thing that kind of Megan Stewart said. I've uh, I wanted to be 24, but Watashik's 24. And I wanted to be three, but Stu's 23. And kind of the numbers just getting pushed down the line. And I was kind of joking around with my dad one day. I was like, yeah, I should be number zero. And he's like, go for it. So I asked AJ, and he said it was fine. And here I am, number zero. Because zero is obviously a pretty unusual number. Not a lot of people pick it. Do, do you sort of embrace the number zero? Uh, kind of. It's grown on me a little bit. It's starting to turn into my number and kind of who I am and how people know me. So I like that. You were from Clark, South Dakota. What's the best place or spot in Clark, South Dakota? Whew, best place in Clark. Um, I'd have to say I like the high school. I like being in our gym, our field house, and our weight room. Um, that's probably my most favorite place in Clark other than my house with my family. And consequently, what's your favorite part or place in Brookings? I have to say Frost, probably the gym again, or the our team room in Frost. I like that we hang out together as a team and watch movies or TV shows, and we just chat in there. So Frost is a big part of my daily life. Where would you rather shoot, the Clark gym or this gym? Probably Frost. Good answer, especially since you're on the team now. What teammate has the most annoying laugh? Oh. I'd say, I don't know if you could really say annoying, but I'd have to say Gabby's is loud. It, like like Megan said, you know when Gabby thinks something's funny, like it's it's loud and it bellows, so. Now everyone knows there's roles on a team, guard, forward, center, you know, bench score, things like that, but what is your role outside of basketball? Are you the jokester? Are you the person who gets on everyone to clean their mess up? What 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 role are you outside of basketball? Uh, I'm definitely the one who gets picked on. Um, I like to joke around. I'll joke around with, uh, I joke around with Carrie a lot. I'm constantly getting on Carrie, joking around with her, but overall I'm the one who kind of gets picked on. I guess people tell me I'm easy to pick on. I don't know what that means, but I'll take it as a compliment. How many tattoos do you have and what's your favorite? I have four, and uh, I think my favorite's the one on my shoulder of the shoe. Um, memorable meaning to me. It's a friend of mine that passed away when we were little, and I used to write her name on my basketball shoes, so I just decided to make it permanent and got a tattoo with her name on it. Whether it's food, music, TV show, what's your guilty pleasure? Ooh, I'd have to say food. Um, any sort of sweets, ice cream especially, or chocolate, one of those two. What is your funniest recollection or moment from head coach Aaron Johnston? You know, in, in the short year and a half that I've been here, there's been a few of them. This year especially, he uh, really likes to laugh at me. Um, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but I'd say, uh, I'd say early in practice this year, I got hit in the face with a ball, and um, he just thought it was hilarious. He kept laughing at me, and I'd say that's probably my one most memorable moment so far. And then lastly, who would win a horse contest among you and your teammates? You know, I'd like to pick myself, but I'd, I'd have to say, I think I'd have to pick Mace. Macy's, uh, she's tough, consistent. So, so you're doubting your abilities a little bit, or are you just, just trying a, to be honest? Just a small bit, but I'm trying to be honest. China Stevens, thanks for playing. When we come back on Jackrabbit Journal, a look at the week ahead for the Rabbits, including Coach Johnston on what a fine line between winning and losing it has been so far this season for his team. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back to Jackrabbit Journal. Viewer alert, this uh, show is not live, so the Jackrabbit men just hosted Fort Wayne on Wednesday night. They may or may not be 5-2 and two in the Summit League right now. We're going to say that they won that game on Wednesday night, and they are 5-2. and two. Anyway, the men head to Tulsa for a game against Oral Roberts on Saturday night. It's at 7 o'clock. The Golden Eagles started the week in a tie with North Dakota State for first place in the Summit League at 4-1. and one. They have a guy named Corey Bilberry who scored 34 against Omaha last week. And they also have Obi Omegano, who is third in the league in scoring right now. He had 15 in their last game, which was a win over Fort Wayne. And two things the Jacks want to get going against Oral Roberts this weekend. Get 
on the glass and get Cody Larson going inside. For me, it's, it's, it's that Cody would be more aggressive offensively, that, that he would establish himself uh, earlier in games. And then uh, uh, I just think that we need to rebound the ball better. I'm not, I'm not pleased at all with how we rebound the ball and our effort on the glass. Uh, but, you know, I think that, that the way we're playing defense, we should be beating people worse on the rebounds and we're not and uh, you know so I think that that has to be a good focus for us. Well just one game this week for the Jackrabbit women. It's at Western Illinois on Wednesday. The Leathernecks feature Ashley Luke who was named the Summit League Player of the Week again this week. It's the fourth time already this season that she has won that award. She averages 19 points and 11 rebounds a game so the Jacks have to deal with her and find a way to win what will probably be another close ball game. In league, we've had close losses, and then overall, we've had some close losses. Six, six of our seven games have been basically down to the, to the wire or games we've held a lead in the second half. We just haven't finished the game as well as we need to. So I, I think it's going to have to do with a few plays here or there. And got to remember that this is a relatively young women's team with uh, Miller and Young and Stevens and Over and even Chloe Corneman, who hasn't had a whole lot of playing time to get settled in. The Jackrabbits do have three seniors, but that is two less than they thought they were going to have. We went into the year thinking we we're going to have five really good seniors and, and one really good junior, and that would make up a big part of our rotation. Uh, we lost Gabby in the summer, lost Megan Stewart early in, in December, lost Megan Watashik for one game at least. Uh, that changes things in a hurry. We've got 60% of our minutes coming from freshmen and sophomores. And the things we need to get better at defensively usually have a little bit better luck when you're more experienced, and that's not going to change for us. So we're going to have to figure out how to get that young team to be a little bit better in some defensive scenarios. I don't think we have to change our defense, but we're going to have to make it really clear on where they can help us and how we can get better. Well, our next live game for the women coming up here on Midco Sports Network is on February 8th when the Jackrabbits will take on Fort Wayne. Our next live game for the men is coming up on January 31st, the end of next week, as the Jacks will host Denver. Check us out on YouTube and Twitter. We'll see you next week on Jackrabbit Journal.